In this tutorial, we will go a little bit more in depth with Kony Visualizer Flex Layout. This is the second tutorial in a series of progressive examples based on the app you see here. This tutorial will cover some more in-depth flex layout concepts, and we will get gradually even more advanced as we progress through this app in subsequent tutorials, applying more complex principles of interaction design as we work our way through it. In this tutorial, we will start out with an overview of the three different layout modes, and then progress on to the rules that are applied to flex layout properties. We will apply these concepts by building a slightly more complex dashboard screen in this app which contains several layers of static and scrolling containers. Let's start out by understanding the three layout modes. Freeform, which is the default, applies an absolute positioning system, where the coordinates are relative to the parent container or form. Flow Vertical and Flow Horizontal are both relative layout systems. With Flow Vertical, the widget's vertical positioning is always relative to the sibling widget, and the horizontal position is relative to the parent container or form. With Flow Horizontal, the widget's horizontal positioning is always relative to the sibling widget, and the horizontal position is relative to the parent container or form. Let's look at an example where there are two buttons, each with different DP positions for the top and left positions. With Freeform, the top position of the top edge of the widget is relative to the top edge of the parent container, while the left edge of the widget is also relative to the left edge of the parent container. With Flow Vertical, notice that the vertical position of the second widget in the container is relative to the previous sibling. And with Flow Horizontal, the left position of the second widget is relative to the previous sibling. Let's briefly cover flex properties and their associated rules. Here's an example layout that I would like to achieve. I will need to have a top container with a fixed height docked to the top of the form and a bottom container, or a footer, also with a fixed height docked to the bottom. The middle scrolling section will be implemented with a flex scroll container, where the top and bottom values match the heights of the header and footer, respectively. In Visualizer, I already have my header and footer elements. To dock the footer element, I will need to specify a bottom value of 0 dp. However, notice that when I enter the value, nothing happens. This is because the top value always overrides the bottom value. To remove this restriction, clear out the top value. By doing so, the bottom value is now respected. For the scrolling segment widget, I want the height, which is normally determined by the height property, to instead be derived from the top and bottom values. Notice that I've specified both the top and bottom values, but the bottom edge is still driven by the height property. To remove this restriction, remove the height property, and the height of the widget will then be derived from the top and bottom values instead. These two examples cover only some of the flex property prioritization rules in Visualizer. Let's get into a slightly more complex app layout. This layout consists of a vertical scrolling behavior, a paginated horizontal scrolling behavior, as well as an animated menu system beneath the primary form content. Let's go through the basic structure of this form. At the highest level is the form. In this example, the form content must scroll, but the fixed elements on the screen must remain static. To achieve this, I'll actually turn off all the scrolling properties of the form, instead relying on the flex scroll containers. In Visualizer, I will first select the form node. and then I'll turn off all scrolling and bouncing behaviors to avoid interference with child scrolling containers. One level down from the form, I have created a master container, which contains everything in my form except the menu, which is layered beneath. I will eventually animate this container with user interaction. In Visualizer, notice that the master container and the menu are at the same level in the hierarchy. As I move the master container to the left, you can see the menu container beneath. Going one more level down from the master container, I have implemented a flex scroll container, which contains all the elements that I want to scroll vertically in the form. This is the flex scroll container selected in Visualizer. 
Notice that the top and bottom values are set, while the height is cleared, so that the height is instead derived from the top and bottom properties. Also notice that the scrolling properties are set to on, and the scrolling direction is set to vertical. Underneath the master content container, but at the same level as the vertical flex scroll container, are the fixed elements. For these, I have used flex containers, docked to the top and bottom of the screen, as we saw in the previous section. Here are the three separate fixed flex containers, which are parented to the master container of the form. For the submenu container, notice that the top position matches the exact height of the topmost header container. To achieve the horizontal scrolling container, I have used a flex scroll container with the scrolling property set to horizontal. I have placed this inside the vertical scrolling container as I want this content also to scroll upwards as the parent container scrolls. This is the horizontal scroll container in Visualizer. Notice that the page contents are arranged horizontally and that the width of each matches the parent container's width exactly. The scrolling properties for this container are set to horizontal and the paging property has been set to on. This covers the major building blocks of this form. In the next set of tutorials, we will go into more detail, showing specific widget layout examples in this form and covering more advanced design interaction through JavaScript. To submit questions, go to developer.coney.com or for more information about Visualizer, go to coney.com products Visualizer.